the bus. You don't wanna see, see this light up by that cut. You know it's for real. Family, 2.0. 2.0. Yes. CJ is right. Yeah, he is. <laughs> What's up, Kane's family? Back with another video. Uh, listen to Manage post press conferences after the game and stuff like that. Same situation, same scenario. Y'all just keep on saying y'all want to fire him. It's getting headway. I've seen a lot of uh, segments on uh, Google that saying that the fans getting tired and it's pressure. Man, he's on the hot seat now. Y'all keep putting, adding that pressure. Just keep adding it, and it might happen. Um, but I really want to hear what Lamar Thomas has to say on Kane Sports channel on YouTube. I can't wait to see what he got to say. Or, you know what I'm saying? And what other other guests that they're going to bring in, because they normally bring in old alumni. And then when I watched the, the video that they had made for the alumni, and I, I not forgot that the Michigan State game that Miami played was the same day it was celebrating the 1991 National Championship team. Yes, I did forget because I already knew what was going to come with the game. I was more worried about the game than what was going on. But for them to lose, why they lost in front of the 91 National Championship team, I see why many don't want them around uh, uh, <laughs> the program because they would have gave them the business on the sideline off the rip. These players keep on talking about we had a great week of practice. I keep telling y'all, fuck that goddamn practice shit. If it ain't done on the off season and it ain't goddamn executed on game day, then why the fuck does the week with the, uh, the, the practice doesn't matter as much as it did back in the days. Because we used to have players that used to take it upon themselves to, to train harder, to practice harder, to push themselves harder. We don't have that. And everybody keeps saying, and NMD TV talked about this. He said he was once told, it, uh, he, everybody keeps asking, everybody keeps saying, was it on the coaches that they can't tackle? Was it on the coaches that didn't catch a block? Well, it's exactly what, what NMD said. It's what these coaches allow and you know, not pulling these players. If they're not doing their job, you need to pull them. Pull, pull them and, and let somebody else play that know how to do the job. You know? But it's what you it's either what you teach them or what you allow them. That's what it was. That's what NMDT said, and it's, it is directly the truth. So, yes, it has uh, everything to do with coaching that these boys can't wrap up. It's everything with coaching that they, they can't block. Or catch a goddamn pass. You know what you should have did? Took them the fuck out. Point that shit out to them on the sideline. Sit their ass down. Try them again. Maybe later in the game. Or try them on the next quarter or some shit. So, yeah. I mean, it's all coaching. You, the team is only following what their leader, which is the head coach. Not King. Not anybody else. If... The coaches apply more pressure to them boys to do their job, to communicate on the field, all that stuff. If they put pressure on them on the practice field, then after that, they'll do it on their own. But as long as they sit there and just be like, yeah, you can get it next play. Be like, you better get it next play. You better than that. Y'all need to be out there communicating. You know what? Matter of fact, sit your ass on the bitch till you learn how to do that shit. You know, it's up to the coaches to do stuff like that. You have to start, out for you to have leaders on your team, you have to show being a leader, first of all. And that comes from the head coach. That's all it comes down to. If the head coach needs to get on his coordinators and position coaches' ass every day at practice for him to apply, for they to apply pressure to them, to them, them student athletes, to apply pressure on each other, hold each other accountable, then you got to do what you got to do. But as long as you sit there and be a fan and a buddy-buddy like Manny Diaz is, you will never have that accomplishment. That man is not a coach. Period. This man was a fucking video guy and went and worked for ESPN and shit. Like, this guy is not a coach. It's the reason why Matt Brown fired his ass at Texas. It's the reason why he got fired at Mississippi State. It's the reason we got fired at La Tech. It's the reason he got fired wherever else he went to. But 
I, I digress on that situation, but it's like, everybody venting, everybody going through this, you know, whatever. I laughed during the fucking game. And I'm going to tell y'all the truth, I fucking laughed. Because I knew we was going to lose. I knew we should have lost Appalachian State. I wanted us to lose Appalachian State because I'm tired of us barely winning and that shit covering up the, the, the real facts and situation that's going on. We really should be on three team right now, but we are one and two team. If we barely escaped by two points, we should have just went ahead and lost that game because it felt like I lost more than it was a W. You can't keep covering up and masking shit and not seeing what the situation is. The situation is Manny is not going to be the guy. And I said that year one of Manny after seeing us lose who we lost to that year. And, and also winning the games we won that first year he was here. And who he started. What really get me was what who he started, how he did Perry, and how he ran his whole team. And what and what you could tell on the field. It really just made a big difference. So to me, they already told me he need to be fired. He's not the guy. Everybody was like, give him a chance. It's his first year, man. Give him this chance. No. If you ever played football, and I repeat, if you ever played football, I play football, okay? I went to Alabama State. I see how they coaches organize their situations and stuff like that. I don't see that stuff. I don't met Larry Coker, okay? I don't see preparation that he, you know, this is the stuff I would keep telling y'all. It might be my opinion, but it's some factual truth to it. But everybody gonna sit there and have their opinion, and it's well welcome, you know, because it's your opinion. Everybody got opinion. I got opinion. I'm not going to make change of opinion. I'm not going to try to. But it's just the end of the day. Y'all have to wake up and realize Manny is going to be Manny. He's a control freak. Favoritism. He learned it from Mark Rick. At least I give Mark Rick the point of when it got to a point, Mark Rick knew when to throw, take one quarterback out and throw another one in. I do give him that much. He knew when the sub players out that wasn't performing. Give Mark Rick that credit. He did have a favoritism seniority thing, but he did throw in a, a freshman in every now and then, a sophomore to replace that, that senior that wasn't doing his job. I do give Mark Rick that. Needless to say for Manny, man, Manny just go with see He go with see What the hell is he doing? Anyway, my fault, y'all. Yeah, he working on the truck out there. But Manny just stuck on favoritism, whoever he likes. He goes off of a backstory more than he does uh, who's, the, who's the best player out there. Fuck the talent. Who's the best hungry player out there? I mean, you got to think about it. Manny Diaz used to used to record for, for ESPN, so he wants to he wants a storyline that can bring more attention to Miami than he does an actual winning winning team. Think about this shit. If you work for ESPN, you know you want to co control a narrative, whether it's wrong or wrong or right. You want to control the narrative, and that's all Manny doing, especially with King. Y'all, King lost his his daddy, and which is you know. That's sad, you know, but everybody got everybody got somebody lost. Cause I, I lost a lot of people, my damn self. Everybody know on this damn like uh, this on YouTube. Everybody lose somebody, but that doesn't mean it has anything to what they contribute to the team. If you sitting there playing hurt and you know you ain't helping the team, then why are you still in the field? We need to stop looking at this traditional shit. Far as oh, we need to build these players up. This is college. This is not NFL. High schoolers can come in and start. If they hungry enough, they can start. Now, you know what I'm saying? NFL get to the point now, they start rookie quarterbacks, rookie defensive backs, rookie defensive linemen, rookie linebackers. Because, well, you know why? They playing better than who they, who's already there. That's the whole purpose of a draft. Now, it's not like I was talking to Maiden Day. This, this, 2010s and up generation is well more educated on football than what it was back in the days. Those parents back in the days when like Lamar Thomas was playing, 
don't parents are sitting there trying to make sure that their kids had a household, you know what I'm saying, and somewhere to eat, I mean, you know, a place to eat and sleep and stuff like that. So that's why them players play hard so they can get their parents out of the hood or parents out of uh, their parents to a better situation. These kids nowadays are more knowledgeable of the game because their parents or they or their parents' homeboys or their brother homeboys used to play and they can get them inside and death. Or they've been doing it ever since Pop Warner and they've really been teaching them since then. You know, it's a different breed now. These these kids are ready to go when they get to a university. Now you got granted, you got some kid that might need to pick up pick up some weight. But you'd be surprised what they could do at heart. Because you can never count the heart out in the dog. Because Ray Lewis was small when he came to the U. And he balled out. Okay, we, you got to understand. We, you got to play with the aggressiveness and the passion. If you ain't got that from a head coach to, to give you that aggression and passion. And then after that you take it on yourself. And then you enforce the accountability and responsibility. There will be none. So y'all have to wake up and understand, man. Yeah, we need a leader on the team as far as the player, but you can't solely count it on the player if the head coach ain't making the right player personnel calls. As far as when I mean player personnel, if y'all don't understand, player personnel is the depth chart and rotation. If you don't have a head coach that that doesn't know how to do that, it's gonna be bad. And you see that with many days. So y'all have to understand, yes, this video is gonna be longer than usual. Um Y'all have to understand, Manny Diaz don't know how to do none of that shit. So he needs to be let go or he needs to resign after this season. I mean, or during the season. And as far as replacing him during the season, if he gets fired, Ed Reed can be an interim head coach. If you don't know what an interim head coach is, that's a temporary head coach until the season is done. Okay? Then after that, we can either see how he does during the season and see if he has pulled the team better. Even in a short span, and we can try to sign him to a one year, two year, or we can just go ahead and just have him coach the rest of the season out and then find us a head coach at the end of the season. So it's other ways to sit down and get us a coach. We're not decimated just because of the fact everybody thinks, oh, the up the upper upper shit A D and them gonna do the same bullshit. Listen, it's a it's a Russian Lewis situation. Russian roulette situation. They might give us give us who we want. They might not. But in the, the day, who the fuck is Manny? Like Manny ain't accomplished shit. He hasn't accomplished nothing. So we can't replace him with nobody worse, unless we just go for a damn another TV person that that, that holds the camera. I mean, what? <laughs> analytical coach is not a, is not the answer. That means he's too, he too worried about the damn stats rather than worried about the game itself on the field. He's not seeing what's on the field. Instead, he's looking at the stats. Oh, King threw 300-something yards. Was that in trash time? Was that in rotation of the other team mid-second quarter to going in the second half? When the second half, trash time, when they rotate people out? Like, what is your stats equating to? I mean, people understand this, man. I mean, really do. And the reason why I'm making this video long is because the fact is that, you know, I don't really drop videos that much. But I just wanted to go ahead and get this stuff out of the way because we have to wait. My delusional fan, fam has to wake up. Everybody talking about King saved our ass. Somebody said King saved our ass playing injured. No, he didn't. That guy did not save our ass. That man made the situation worse. What King does is dig a hole. And then bails himself out in the second half. He tries to in the second half sometimes. It's not always work depending on what team you play. Okay. It's sad. You're selfish, King. King, you are selfish. You're selfish for sitting there going out on the field, playing hurt, and you know you ain't producing. A leader will step down and let TVD or Jake Garcia coming in and show what they got. Me per me personally, I rather have Jake Garcia. So miss me with the leadership. If you want to be a real leader, step down. Manny Diaz, if you want the program to be better, step down. Resign. That's all I gotta say. Well, like I always say, it's great to be a hurricane. Hit stick, bust dick. We deserve victory. Those kings are the shit. I'm out.